don't want to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we blog, blog, blog for you Check out the website Hi, and welcome to episode number 10 of Be Seen Blogging. I'm your host, Jen Miller, and I'll be sharing with you what blogging KPIs are and how you can measure them to enhance conversion on your website. Whether you are just starting out or have a seasoned audience already, I hope you find this information will help you in a very real way. When evaluating the performance of a blog, we often review KPIs or key performance indicators Items such as the number of views or the amount of click-throughs are important. However, measuring the number of likes or shares and retweets and seeing if the visitors were returning or new and what their level of engagement was, did they stop at one post or travel through the website, these are all critical factors to determining your success. Most bloggers are more concerned about telling a story and drawing in the reader with a well-composed post then they really are about the numbers. However, if you're trying to make money on your website, you need to create some actionable deliverables or goals, referred to in the sales world as KPIs. I think KPIs should always be attached to a value. One might be to increase your monthly sales by 20%. To reach this goal or KPI, you may want to include more frequent and specific posts with a visual call to action linked to a particular product. You might increase your posting in social media or your ad spend. Regardless of how you choose to create or share content, when you're attaching a how to anticipated growth, you're setting up indicators that show if your plan is working. Obvious ways to know you have a working plan are increases in conversion. If you start blogging and posting to social media and then notice an uptake in sales, you don't have to stop taking orders to run a report. Look at the metrics as you have time and keep doing what you're doing. When discussing the trends with your marketing team, investors, or shareholders, you'll be able to fall back on the statistics and see exactly where and why the increase occurred. That's the beauty of setting up metrics before you get started. Throughout the designated time period, you will need to monitor certain things, the indicators that show how your goal is reached. You're going to look for traffic growth and spikes and see when and how they were caused. Your reporting will show whether you are seeing new versus existing users. If the bulk of your reader base is returning, that's great. That means they're loyal. However, You also probably need to be sharing your post to a new audience. We all love return readers, but the trick is to widen that base with every piece of content you write. Monitor how and when the reader came to your site. This gives you a good read of when the best times to post are. And if you are running a Facebook or Twitter campaign and find that you have no hits to your site while the campaign is active, then you'll be able to decipher that perhaps that may not be the best use of your funds. How long are your readers staying on your site? What pages are readers visiting and are they traveling to multiple pages? Are they subscribing or requesting more information? Perhaps you may find that they are using your site search and having that search actually result in a purchase. If you have affiliate links, are they leaving your site to go to other websites? Are your viewers reading about a product and moving on to check out or sign up, but then stopping before completing the sale or booking an appointment? All of these items are things that you can review and consider as you analyze your key performance indicators, the numbers that show whether or not your blog posts are effective. And if you find that they're not effective, then you need to dig a little deeper and figure out how can you speak to your readers to persuade them to take that next step, whether it's sign up or purchase or move on to the affiliate site that you're trying to recommend. When setting up KPIs, make sure they fit your overall goals as a company. For a realtor, that may mean more home value requests. For an e-commerce site, that could mean higher cart values and completed checkouts. If you're a doctor's office, it could be more online appointments scheduled. You get it. Every business has to define their own 
KPIs, whether they're determined by a sole proprietor or a management team, and explain to every team member. Targeted KPIs can be tracked even better when team members understand and are on board, because even if the customer starts on the website, they may decide to pick up the phone instead of finishing the transaction online. And this needs to be recorded. This is especially true with larger priced items, such as travel or vehicle purchases. When too many clicks and decisions are required, a reader may skip the cart hoping to connect in person. And that is okay. After all, the entire reason you are blogging in the first place is to engage and connect so you can share the value of your service or product. Sometimes the true KPI is the voice on the other end of the phone, smiling as you ease them through their purchase. Just make sure you record that call as a website win if it started there so your metrics will be accurate. Thank you for listening in to Be Seen Blogging, episode number 10, where we discuss blogging KPIs and what they mean all in under 10 minutes. If you are enjoying this podcast, please review it on iTunes or Stitcher and share it with your friends. You can reach me, Jen Miller, on Twitter at Jen Blogs for You or through my Need Someone to Blog website. I look forward to answering questions you may have in future episodes. Talk to you next week. Need someone to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we blog, blog, blog for you Check out the website and you'll see Try it out and become an icon of your industry We will develop a voice for your blog To connect with your